I, 27F, took my sister, 25FM, and two kids in and have now been stabbed in the back. Update, hello everyone sorry if this is not the correct way to update but this was my first time ever posting. I just want to start by saying thank you to everyone that took their time to give me their advice. I read through almost all comments and tried to reply to all. I took the weekend to myself and spent it with people that love and know me for who I really am. I am hurt that my sister and my relationship came to this. But I have learned so much from all of you and we both need to heal separately. I hope someday in the future when we are both more mature we will patch things up to be okay. My sister left this past weekend and thankfully disposed of all her trash and things she was not taking. She agreed to pay the rent for the next two months and some other bills that I had paid for her. I don't know if she will follow through as she doesn't have a new job in our hometown yet. I really do hope she does because that will help me better prepare until I can move out or find someone to take over. I'm thankful that she agreed to that even if things ended badly. As for my nieces, I talked to them and told them that I will always be there for them. I explained that whatever was happening with their mom and me, had nothing to do with them. They can text and call me anytime. Now I will seek therapy and begin to heal from childhood trauma and this and I hope to learn to take care of myself first. Thank you all three. Original post. I don't even know where to begin as the only thing I can think about is how deeply this heartbreak feels. Some backstory. My. 27F, sister, 25F, was a teen mom she had her first daughter at 16 and then her second only a year later. Her life has not been easy and she never finished high school among a lot of other things that happened along the way. We are complete opposites, I have my career no kids and am currently in school again. She was in an abusive relationship with a drug addict for about 8 years. And I was there every step of the way trying to help her and keep her safe as best as I could while I was away in college. The level of anxiety and panic attacks I suffered throughout the year just thinking one day I was going to wake up to her and her girls being seriously hurt is indescribable. So all I ever wanted was to take them away from that situation and keep them safe. In 2019, I finally convinced her and I worked hard enough to move her with me 400 miles away from the abusive baby daddy. I supported her with 24-7 child care. I took my nieces to school, I spent my own money making sure they were always well dressed and fed. I thought if I helped my sister with everything I could, she would go back to school and eventually get a better job. I put my own personal life and growth aside to dedicate myself to being a second parent and a better sister. And I know I am not perfect, and I made mistakes along the way but I never put anything or anyone before them. Fast forward to this past week. It has been a little over a year since my sister first moved in with me. Well now she has a new boyfriend who has shown up to be her rescuer and of course she doesn't need me anymore. Through a text message, she has declared that she is moving out this weekend because living with me feels like prison. She is not even mature enough to have an adult conversation and provide appropriate notice for release her name is on until 2020. 22. Now I am being left with having to figure out how to pay her portion of the rent on top of mine. Keep in mind that my debt has only grown in the last year while I covered expenses for three additional people when she couldn't afford something. Now why is all this happening? Well living with me is like living in prison because, I tell her to please clean up in the common areas. I try to teach my nieces to be responsible by having them clean after themselves practice proper hygiene, and take schoolwork seriously. I like to live in a clean environment and my sister is clearly the opposite, so me constantly asking them to clean after themselves results in living in prison. Another example, I am technically only supposed to be the babysitter from 5pm to 1.30am which are my sister's working hours. The rest of the day is supposed to be for my work and my school work. Well in this past year never has that been the case. My nieces are with me 24 Four seven to say the least, obviously until I send them to bed. My sister goes to work without having to worry about what meals they will have. She sleeps in until 2 p.m. every day wakes up, eats, goes back to work. So when does she care for her daughters? I ask myself that too. Now going back to I'm not perfect. I am human, I make mistakes, living in a cluttered and dirty environment has always caused me stress. Having to constantly pick up after others to avoid this gets tiring. So do I always say it in a nice way? Maybe not. But in the end I know this is probably only a surface area issue. So I am trying 
trying to understand why my sister is doing this, but none of this matters when we have the worst thing she could have done to me. My nieces will never see me the same way. My nieces lived through the constant fighting and fear caused by their parents' relationship. They have a lot of trauma. I quickly recognized signs and tried to get them help at school as much as I could. I love them with all my heart and never wanted them to live in that kind of environment and this is why I did everything I could to keep them happy and safe and also why I am so hurt. After all this moving out transpired and my sister and I got in multiple fights through text message. He had the audacity to sit my nieces down and tell them all kinds of things about me that are untrue. She told them that I am a selfish individual that I hog food and water at home, that I only do things for them so I can hold it over their heads and say you will treat me like this after everything I've done for you. These are all words that my nieces shared with me, so hearing it from them hurt even more. She told them that they have to move out because they are a burden to me, among many other things that I cannot even type because my stomach sinks and I haven't gotten this ache out all week. When I confronted her about this and told her that it was not okay to create an image of me in their heads that is untrue, she simply replied they are truths, they are my perception of things I have lived with you. This was after she had asked me not to bring the girls into to our fight and then went behind my back and stabbed me with the sharpest knife she had. I know this is all over the place and probably doesn't make any sense but this is only part of a long story. I guess I am here tonight because tonight was the worst night. After my older niece had been acting different in the way she interacts with me all week, tonight my heart broke even more. As I approached my sister to have an adult conversation about the situation she was there and the look on her face, when she looked at me, was the same scared anxious look she would have when her drug addict dad would start a fight with her mom. She looked at me like I was the person going to hurt her. She yelled at me don't talk to me, don't talk to me, leave me alone. When all I did was look at her and address her to say I don't understand why you're crying and looking at me like this, I am talking to your mom. The next few minutes after that I tried my hardest to talk in my most calm voice and I did not let the hurt I was feeling show through. To be seen by my nieces as someone mean and capable of hurting them, that was the last straw. I don't care if I go broke from having to finish out this lease. I don't care if my sister leaves with her new man. I wish that it works out for her because I won't be there the next time. But what breaks me down to my core is that the two little girls that I was trying to protect and heal now see me as a monster and like the bad person that doesn't want them around. I don't know how to heal and move on from this. I do not want my sister to be part of my life anymore. I don't know what to do. Too long didn't read, I took my sister in with her two daughters to keep her safe from abusive BB daddy. Now she has a new boyfriend and is moving out. She has poisoned the minds of my nieces with lies and now they see me like a monster. I don't know how to heal. I want to cut her completely out of my life. Am I doing wrong? Edit, added an update. You are clearly being used here your sister took advantage of you and your nieces trusted her due to her being their mother figure you have to distance yourself from them and be there but not interfere in their lives you can only hope the best but just remember your sister will continue using you. Your best thing to do is helping your nieces in their time of need but don't offer your sister a dime because the cycle will start all over again and you will end up getting hurt all over again. You can't save someone like your sister. I'm sorry. You can only be there for your nieces. Can you speak to someone at the school and let them know what's going on and for them to keep an eye on the girls? That way if they start needing help the teachers will know as soon as possible. The only other thing you can do is involve CPS if you see evidence that the girls are being abused or neglected. I am so sorry. Be gentle with yourself and take extra care of yourself for a while. This is a tough lesson to learn. I learned a long time ago never to do something for someone that they need to learn to do on their own. I just want to say I'm so sorry Op. Your sister is truly horrible for how she treated you. If you can, maybe talk to your nieces one on one slash without their mom there and just let them know you'll be there for them. It's really sad how she prioritizes her new relationship over stability for her kids, to the point she lies about you to them. Disgusting. Some people aren't made to be parents. Feel very sorry for the kids, and for you. I hope it works out in the long term somehow. 
It's not your niece's fault they have a shit mother, try to keep in contact with them and tell them you will be there if they need anything. If she has her name on the lease she should still be paying until it is up rather than abandoning you. That's part of what leases are for, remind her that and enforce it. I've 25M, been lying about my job situation to friends for the past few years. What do I do? Hi, so I, 25M, have been lying about my job situation for the past few years to friends. When I graduated, I got lucky and managed to land an internship at a law firm. Part of it had to do with my mother working in the legal field and so I always had exposure to the field, but a lot of it was just dumb luck. I worked very hard and landed a full-time job in the mail room, with promises for promotion. I even made it to junior paralegal by the end of the first year with a lot of hard work and sucking up. The problem is, I ended up losing interest in law and my plans for completing my grad diploma in law kind of fizzled out. Eventually my supervisors at the firm I worked at kinda realized I wasn't going to be progressing much more without a comprehensive education under my belt. Elbow grease only gets you so far when knowledge is literally the cornerstone of the field. So sadly I was laid off. I was a bit disappointed in myself and honestly a little embarrassed too. But I kept the news of being laid off to myself, and well. Over the past few years every time a friend would ask me hey so how's things going, how's work? I just say something like oh yes yeah, busy. And then if they specify the law firm, I don't correct them. I just give a vague response like oh yeah it's great, things are getting busy this time of year etc. Friends also assume I'm pretty well off when I'm pretty much around average. Even when friends who might have been in a financial situation similar to me say hey so I'm in a bit of a pinch with rent. Or hey could you shout me lunch? Etc. Instead of admitting that I'm not really amazingly rich or whatever, I just say sure you're here, however much you need. Just pay it back. But with this also comes a lot of you're so lucky, making that much money. If only I could make that much. Anyway, so last month I got a huge promotion at my work, essentially manager of my particular branch, and with it came a huge paycheck raise. Larger than honestly anything I could have hoped for. And well, now that I'm actually making however much my friends assumed I was making, I'm just wondering if I would be an asshole if the next time someone asks. I say so I was actually working hard just like you guys as well. I wasn't really crazy lucky like everybody was thinking. I know I made my metaphorical bed when I decided to pretend I had made something of myself even when I hadn't, but it's not like I'm excited to be forever labeled as the guy that got lucky when he was right out of high school with an awesome job, when I believe I've worked hard and paid my fair share of dues. I'm very sorry if I come across as an ass, but I'd appreciate any advice. What should I do or say? Edit, I now work at a tech retail store. Does it really matter? People change careers all the time. I say so I was actually working hard just like you guys as well. I wasn't really crazy lucky like everybody was thinking. No. You say, hey guys, I'm embarrassed to admit this but I had a change of heart about getting my law degree and consequently I was laid off over a year ago. I've been lying to you about where I worked because I was afraid that you would think less of me if I were to admit that I was laid off. I hope you can forgive me for being deceptive. I, M31, accidentally got a woman, F25, pregnant a few years ago. Now an accidental family, I love them all but I am just so miserable. Using a throwaway because I suspect I might get some hate for this, but I just have no one that I can talk to about this and desperately need some advice as I'm sure someone else must have been in my position before. I should also say I have written out this story a few times already and worried that it's way too long, so I am just going to try keep it simple. First up, I have super horrible depression. I am constantly wanting to take my own life. It's the fucking worst. I used to deal with my depression by embracing a carefree, independent, selfish sex, drugs and rock and roll lifestyle until eventually one girl, then 21, 
turned up on my, then 27, doorstep about 5 weeks after meeting her, holding a positive pregnancy test. I didn't want the child, and advised it wasn't great to have a baby with a complete stranger, especially since she was so young and I was at a very unstable stage in my life. She vetoed this and opted to have the baby. I didn't want to have to spend 16 years of my life giving half of my money to some random woman and our child, nor did I want to be remembered as being the useless dad who wasn't involved or even just be responsible for any difficulties that child had growing up because I had killed myself. So I offered my full support, we ended up dating properly and were in a relationship by the time our daughter was born. Fast forward a year through 50% good times 50% arguing, mostly over parenting, we have very different opinions due to our own upbringings, and we decide to have another child, mostly so that our daughter has a sibling with a close age, so that it would pay off in the long run. Fast forward another two years and here we are. I am now engaged to my baby mama and I think she is absolutely brilliant, she's gorgeous, hilarious and a great mum, but we still have so many clashes because of how different we are. I love my kids too, but they make my life so difficult and I have basically had to give up all hope of progressing in my career because of them. I am completely depressed and miserable. I have even built a secret gallows for myself and got the hangman's noose all ready for when it gets too much. I do miss my independence and living on my own slash not having to speak to people when I'm not working. I miss being able to focus on my own mental health whereas now I have to be in dad mode 100% of the time, and support my fiance when she is tired or ill, but there is zero support for me, I see myself as the safety net, although everyone only just focuses on my partner and what she's doing and how she's raising two kids even though I am with them more often than she is, I don't know what to do, I never wanted to be here, but I'm here, being here makes me miserable, not being here would let my whole family down, too long didn't read, got a random younger woman pregnant, got into long term relationship, had a second child, my mental health is deteriorating badly and now I don't know if I can handle being a part of this family but the thought of leaving would be horrible and the only third option just seems to be suicide. Edit, I want to say thank you to everyone for all the comments, I will read through them properly when I have time but I appreciate people taking the time to help. But I want to clarify a few things too, 1, I have tried therapy, it wasn't helpful and I lost my place because I missed a call, and I am actively and desperately trying to get help with other services. I cannot afford private therapy, only NHS. 2, contraception was involved but sometimes these things still happen, the details aren't important to this post but the point is neither of us thought there was much chance of a baby. 3. I am on medication, and have tried several but with only bad side effects, mirtazipine, sertraline, citralopam, fluoxetine, amitriptyline and trazodone. The trazodone helps me sleep but I am still miserable AF. 4. Regarding the messages that I a bad person for not appreciating how lucky I am to have a fiancé and two kids, I know, but that's all the more reason why it's impossible for me to talk about being depressed because I feel guilty about the fact that I should be enjoying this life. Edit 2. Just because I am seeing a lot of comments and messages saying should have had a vasectomy or should have worn a condom, please, I am asking for help about my current situation. I wasn't going to have a vasectomy in my 20s, I don't think they even let you do that on the NHS, because I wanted to have kids, I just wanted to sort out my career, be older and be in a stable relationship first. Also, I am tired of the condom comments over the past 4 years, she told me last minute she had a latex allergy and rejected my condom but offered a latex free one. As it evidently turns out, these are much less effective and prone to splits. If you can find a man who would, while naked on top of a naked girl, stop the whole thing to sit there and start googling about the effectiveness of this brand of condoms, I will give you 10 pounds. Sorry but where a condom comments are neither new nor helpful to me right now.